Good morning. Good morning. Pleasure to be with you this morning as we worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Another another hot week, so <laughs> it's good to be with you this morning and to worship our Lord. Do you have any announcements this morning as we begin our time of worship? Adele. Yeah, all right, so Joyful Church, uh, they're having a uh, yeah, festival this coming Saturday out in the Garrett Shortcut. Uh, I know they do have a lot of property there, so I'm guessing it'll be outdoors. Yeah, and Yeah, course. it's an old golf course. Space. Yeah, so they'll have plenty of space for that type of thing. But, uh, but yeah, there's information in the back on Bolton Board if you're interested in that. So, yeah. All right, any other announcements this morning? All right, yeah, uh, one announcement, uh, Women's Fellowship, uh, they're going to postpone their meeting for tomorrow, uh, just so you're going to postpone it to uh, a later time or, or maybe wait till August, and so just kind of see where things are at, but uh, Wanda will we'll get in touch with uh, those in Women's Fellowship about that. Also, Vacation Bible School, uh, we're going to be doing the, that online August 3rd through 7th, and again, the theme for that is Entering God's Construction Zone, and we'll be having Zeb and Celery and more Puppet, and also I have Human Friends uh, as they take us on a journey to see God at work, to, to know his blueprint for us, to discover our one true foundation, to meet our bridge builder Jesus, and to show us how to live with the right tools. And so with that, we're going to be sending home craft materials and other activities for the whole week. So if, there's, uh, if you have a, a child or a grandchild or, or just a neighbor or something like that that you would like to have their, their kid participate in that, uh, please contact the church office as soon as can, and we will get those uh, materials out to them. Uh, so they can participate throughout the week in our vacation Bible school. Yeah, and also I just mentioned keep uh, Chuck and I, and I know probably we'll be pulling a few others in as well to help uh, make those Bible school videos this week. And um, so just pray for us as we put that together, just for everything to go smoothly and just to be able to, uh, just to glorify the Lord through that and share the gospel through that, that message. Also, um, just I have on there, yeah, continue to pray at 7 o'clock with your family. So... Uh, just each, if you're able to gather at that time or another time during the day, just as a reminder to be in prayer uh, just in your household. And to just continue to pray. Obviously, we want to continue to pray for healing for the coronavirus, uh, for the stop of its spread. We just you know, recognize that's still uh, something we need to be praying against. And also, we need to pray, continue to pray for salvation in this time that people would turn to Christ. And also, we want to just continue to pray for our nation, uh, for reconciliation, for repentance, uh, for healing, for, for peace in our nation. Uh, we just want to continue to pray for that and just to pray for, for our part in that as well as uh, ministers of the gospel that we would uh, just be the light in this time that our nation needs us to be. So, all right. Any other announcements? All right, again, a pleasure to be with you this morning. So let me call up Dan. He's going to share a word with us uh, to begin our time of worship this morning. Good morning, church. It's great to be with everyone and see everyone again this week. As we get started, would you join with me in prayer? Father, we just come before you right now and we pray, Lord, as we begin this service, as we begin this time together, Lord, we invite you into every part of it. Holy Spirit, have your way. Right now, as, as we look to your word and, and as Pastor Mark brings the word and we sing songs and, Lord God, may we receive from it what you have for us to take from it. Holy Spirit, have your way. We love you. We give you this time. In Jesus' name, amen. So I'm going to be reading from Joshua chapter 24, verses 14 and 15 the word of the lord says so fear the lord and serve him wholeheartedly put away forever the idols your ancestors worshiped when they lived beyond the euphrates river and in egypt serve the lord alone but if you refuse to serve the lord then choose today whom you will serve would you prefer the God your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates? Or will it be the gods of the Amorites 
in whose land you now live. But as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. My friends, what a great portion of scripture here. And I just underlined a few parts of it. And what it says, serve him wholeheartedly with everything we got, with our whole heart. And it says, if you refuse to serve the Lord, then choose whom you will serve. There's so many things that take our attention and, and, and take our mind off of what's really important these days. And, um, and sometimes it's hard to focus on what we're doing and, and, and who we're serving and, and where we're looking and everything that's going on. But it says here, it says here, that for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. And my friends, that's my prayer for all of us this morning. As we look to this word and we begin this service, will you pray with me? And Father, we love you and we thank you for this word. We thank you for this opportunity to just look at it and think about it. Lord God, and as I just stated, there's so many things that can take our attention off of you. And Lord God, I pray that today and each and every day, Lord God, you would draw us closer to knowing you, draw us closer to your goodness, the plan that you have for us, Lord God. Lord, help us to get excited about what it is, Lord, that you are doing in and through our lives. Father God, as we serve you, as we seek you, Lord God, may we find you more and more. For the remainder of this service, Father God, may you have your way. Speak to us. Allow us to see and take from it exactly what you have for us. Lord, we love you, we thank you, and we praise you. And we ask all this in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. Thank you. All right, thank you, Dan, very much. Yeah. All right, let us uh, join in singing this morning our opening hymn, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. We'll be singing the first three verses, and the words will be on the screen. Please stand as you're able. Maybe seated. Yeah. 
All right, this time we'll come to the Lord in prayer. And are there any just joys uh, just that you'd like to share with your church family this morning? Debbie, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God for Dan's message last week, and uh, we, I'm just thrilled that he was able to be here to do that. That's awesome. So yeah, praise God, he's able to bless you guys, and just to be a blessing from the Lord for everyone. So praise God. Yeah. Thank you, Dan. Yeah. Yeah. D. Yeah. Yeah, good. Praise God. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So a blessing for Yvonne as she's been over there. And uh, yeah, just thank you that she's doing well for the staff and all their work over there as well. And um, yeah, a person I've been helping out as well named Chester. Some, some of you are aware of him as well, but he's, he was moved over there in the same time period as Yvonne and all that. And he's, it's been a, doing well for him as well. He's still kind of figuring some things out. Just he needs some wisdom for some decisions and things. But uh, just I just praise God for just the Wimberwoods and the care they've been giving him as well. So yeah, yeah. All right. Yes, yeah, 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 challenging, challenging time for sure, yeah, so, yeah, go ahead, Carol. Okay, yeah, so Carol uh, just had an opportunity to move into Coventry, so we'd be neighbors right here. <laughs> so, no, praise God, and just for that opening, that opportunity, and just pray for blessing as she moves in that, just for a smooth transition, yeah. All right, so, go ahead, Lacey. <laughs> Yeah, so thank you for your prayers for Pat Gardner, and she's doing better and just continuing to recover well and just continue to pray for her just for uh, moving forward as well with rehab and different things. So, yeah. All right. Amy, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, praise God, yeah. Yeah, I was, and I also, yeah, praise God for just safe travels for my family as well, and for, for Amy and their vacation and getaway as well, and yeah, good to just have a little bit of a, a break for sure as well, and yeah, good visiting family for me, and it was, it was different, you know, just not able to do all the normal activities you normally could do, but uh, it was good just being with family, being able to just uh, spend time with one another for sure, so yeah. <laughs> Mary Lou, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure. All right, so yeah, Mary Lou just giving some updates. Dave, David Grad, his surgery went well. Uh, Jim Kermanic, he's improving. Uh, still some issues uh, with his plasma and blood levels, but he's improving, so continue prayers for him. And Larry Frazier, uh, Mary Lou's brother-in-law, just has a, a blood infection and UTI, so pray for healing for him. And, and then also a new one, Dave Liska, uh, who has going to need to go undergo a prostate uh, cancer treatment, but also he has cellulitis right now, so pray for healing uh, and treatment uh, for him with that. So, all right. Yeah, Adele. Yeah. Um, these are the family of Kelly Cooley. She graduated with me. Um, she died after a long battle with cancer. Um, but praise God that over the past year she's been able to share her testimony through her blog on the internet and um, that she was very confident that she was going home 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So prayer, prayers for the family of Kelly Tooley. Uh, just obviously in her passing, uh, but we also, in the midst of that too, we, we praise God for Kelly's testimony in her life, uh, just for the Lord uh, and just her confidence in and that salvation. So we praise God for her witness to so all those that she was able to impact and just for that to continue to spread. So yeah. All right, well, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we come before you this morning, we come before you always with, with grateful hearts, uh, just with, with thanksgiving, Lord, for your love for us, your goodness, your mercy, your, your compassion. Lord, we thank you for how you've revealed yourself to us, that you've made yourself known. Lord, that each day as we see the sunrise, as we look at creation around us, we're reminded of your sustaining and your creative power. We're reminded of just your provision reminded of your love and your kindness through those things and, and also you have given us your word you've given us um, your son Jesus and just his presence in our lives that just daily are reminders of your grace your goodness your your uh, your blessing in our lives uh, so Lord we just we are whenever we come in prayer we we just are grateful and we're thankful uh, just to be able to know you to be able to serve you to be able to call you our father uh, we are so blessed and we we recognize that Lord and so, Lord, we, we just come before you in thanksgiving this morning. Uh, Lord, we, we thank you so much for what you've done in, in each of our lives, just how you have uh, drawn us to yourself, how you've made yourself known, how you've worked in our hearts, uh, how you've shown us your power, shown us your love, your grace. Lord, just may we all just continue uh, just to know you more each day. May we continue to grow in our relationship with you, that we would pursue you with all our hearts. Uh, Lord, just that we would uh, just each and every day Definitively say, as for, as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Uh, Lord, that we would not ever depart from, uh, from you, Lord, but just that we would definitively in our lives uh, just, just uh, worship you as Lord and Savior. Lord, and we, we recognize that there are, yes, there are other things in this world that, that we can serve, that, other, that uh, there's so many idols, there's so many false things in this world. Uh, but, Lord, we, we recognize just the futility of all those things. And we recognize just the great joy of knowing and serving you. So, Lord, we uh, just come before you and worship, and we come before you knowing that you are our Lord and you are good. And we thank you for that, Lord, that we can worship you and, and know you as Lord and Savior. Uh, Lord, just may we daily uh, just surrender our lives to you. Lord, we thank you also just for your forgiveness, for your healing in our lives. We, we recognize our great need for you. Uh, we recognize that we, we have sinned, and we have sinned against you. And uh, we recognize a need for your forgiveness and healing. And thank you that you provided that through your son, Jesus. Thank you for the salvation that we have in him. Lord, I thank you so that you loved us so much uh, that even while we were still sinners, uh, Christ died for us. Lord, I thank you that we can put our trust and faith in you and know your forgiveness, know your healing, and that we can uh, just come into your family, come into your, your kingdom uh, because of the precious blood of your son. Lord, just this day as we, uh, we do look around us, we look at our, our community, our nation, our world, uh, we recognize there are just so many things happening right now that are um, hard to figure out, hard to, hard to sort through and filter through and just kind of and, and hard to discern uh, what do we do with all these things. Uh, Lord, we, we just recognize that. Uh, we know, but we do know that all these things are under your control, that you are sovereign, that you are working in our midst, you're working in our community, you're working in our nation, you're working in our world. Lord, we, we know that you are powerful to do so. And so I thank you for that, that in the midst of all the confusion and chaos that is going on, uh, that there is a certainty that you are sovereign, that you are working in these situations. Um, we, we are strengthened by just knowledge of your word and just, just different people throughout uh, just your redemptive history, just who uh, were living in different cultures and different kingdoms that were um, in turmoil as well, but you were, you were faithful to those uh, who, who trusted you and sought, sought after you. 
and you revealed your plan to them and, and allowed them to serve you in the midst of those uh, tumultuous times. So Lord, we, we ask that for us, that we uh, would just know how to serve you in these times, Lord, that you would guide us by your word, you would guide us, um, that your spirit would fill us, that you give us discernment and grace uh, to know how to love and serve you. Lord, with uh, just everything that, uh, first and foremost, that we'd be looking to your word, that we'd be looking to your gospel, and that would be just the, the focus of our hearts in this time, and just, Lord, that we may be a beacon of, of light, uh, a beacon of your gospel in, in, in this time, uh, in the midst of everything going on. Just give us that discernment, give us uh, your, your wisdom to know how to serve you in this time, to, to know how to share your gospel. Lord, just may that be the focus of our hearts. Lord, and we... With everything going on, we pray for our nation. We do pray for healing from the coronavirus. Uh, we pray for those that are infected with it for uh, just their healing, that you protect and watch over them. Uh, we pray for the stop of its spread. Uh, we do pray for a vaccine, uh, for uh, just uh, for something that can be provided that would provide healing for it. Uh, Lord, we, we also pray for, in the midst of all this, that you know, just that this has raised a lot of challenging questions for a lot of people, just that they would turn to you, they would seek your wisdom, your truth, and they would um, seek your salvation in this time, Lord Jesus. Lord, and with that, and all the other things, just the unrest and uh, just everything's going on in our nation right now, we pray uh, for, for peace, we pray for reconciliation, we pray for opportunities for constructive uh, dialogue, uh, just we pray for uh, your, your way to prevail, your will to prevail, and your goodness to prevail in those situations, and uh, just give us guidance as a nation to, to come back to you, to seek you, and to put you first. Lord, just that we would trust in you in this time. Lord, we, just, we do pray for, continue to pray for protection for uh, uh, just our policemen and women, just in different uh, ones just protecting us in this time. We pray for your protection upon them, Lord. Uh, and if there's people that are, are, that are protesting, that they would do so peacefully. We pray for you to work in their hearts that there would, again, be opportunities for constructive dialogue in the midst of all this. Uh, Lord, we just pray for your healing upon our nation, that we would seek you. And we pray for the church and our nation as a whole, too, that we uh, would just be about your work, that we would be, um, as you called us in your word, that we, we are ministers of reconciliation, just as Christ reconciled us back to God, that we would uh, be about the work of reconciliation uh, that is needed in our communities and, and across our nation, and that reconciliation would come through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you that we can also come before you and uh, just, just lift up different just praise and concerns that are going on in our lives. Uh, Lord, just we, we praise you that you are aware of every detail of our lives, that you're always working, and we thank you for that. Uh, Lord, just thank you for the gift of, of Dan's message last week, and just thank you for your spirit speaking through him, and just, uh, just pray your blessing on Dan and the ministry he has here with our youth, and also the ministry down in New Day. Uh, bless him and Chris both, and just uh, strengthen and watch over them, and uh, just bless them in the ministry that you provided for them. And Lord, we pray for uh, pray, uh, just a praise for Yvonne, just doing well over at the home as well as Chester, and just thank you for the staff over there and all the workers there. Continue to bless them, protect them, and watch over them. Uh, we thank you for uh, for Carol, the opportunity for her to move into apartment over here. Just pray your blessing upon her. May that be uh, just a smooth transition for her, and you, you bless her in that new home. Just uh, just bless her in every way. We thank you for Pat Gardner that she's doing better and recovering. Just continue to watch over her and just. Uh, Fill her with your love and just with your healing. And we just thank you for, for safe travels for Amy and family and uh, just my family as well. Just thank you for the opportunity um, just for, for time with, with family and just that time to be refreshed. Lord, we want to continue to lift up David Grata. Uh, just thank you for the surgery going well. Just continue to be with his recovery and as he awaits results. And be with Jim Kermanic and the different needs that he has as well. Watch over him and protect him. Be with Larry Frazier, uh, just in uh, the different infections he has, that you would bring healing to those, you protect and watch over him and give him strength. And be with David Liska as well as he uh, just is awaiting treatment for his prostate, but also that as he has a cellulitis, that you provide healing for that, you protect and watch over him. Uh, we just pray in each of those uh, uh, men's lives that you would just work in their lives in this time, just draw them near to you. And we do pray for the Kelly Tooley family as well as she passed away. Uh, we just, uh, uh, just pray that you be near to, their, to her family, just comfort and encourage them in this time. Uh, Lord, we just thank you for Kelly's testimony in her life, uh, just her confidence, her faith in you, her witness for you. Uh, just pray for all those she was able to impact uh, just as she went through her, uh, just the trial of, of facing cancer, Lord, just that you would be with those that heard her testimony. Just may they respond to you. May they give their lives to you and just have that same love that, that Kelly had for, for you. 
Lord, just pray your blessing again on, on her family in this time. Lord, just as we close, too, we want to just pray for Vacation Bible School and obviously a different format this year, but we just thank you for the opportunity to share your gospel uh, to the kids that will be able to engage in that. And, Lord, we just pray for uh, Chuck and myself and others that will be participating in the videos, uh, just that you would fill us with your spirit and just guide uh, just every part of that. And as we put that all together, just may that be a blessing to each child and to each family. Uh, just may they draw closer to you through that. Lord, thank you again. We praise you, and we love you, and we thank you for your goodness and grace. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. All righty. Uh, just, again, for our offering during this time, um, you know, the offering plates, we'll, we'll have them in the lobby at the conclusion of the service. And um, for those of, that are going to be watching on video later, I guess you're, you're also welcome to send in your offering to the church office. And we just thank everyone for your gift to the Lord and his ministry through our church family. So this time we'll be, um, we're going to be doing a, another hymn, and it's, it's, it's going to be a video, so you're welcome to sing along with it. And it's the song, Who You Say I Am. And it's one we have sung before with Praise Team, but um, you're welcome to join along and sing as we, we do this now. So hopefully I can get this to work. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in all oh, his love for me, all oh, his love for me. God for that song and 
It's going to tie in a little bit with our message this morning as well. We're going to be getting back into Philippians chapter 3 and the idea of forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead. So just being reminded that we are a child of God, you know, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. And so we praise God for that song and that message of that. So, all right, well, this morning, let me be, I'm going to be reading again from Philippians 3. Let me forward to the next slide here. Hopefully if this will cooperate with me, maybe. <laughs> I knew this was going to probably happen. There it goes. All right. So yeah, we're going to be getting back into Philippians chapter 3, verses 1 through 14. And we've been looking at this for a few weeks. Uh, so we're going to be jumping back into that this morning. So let me go ahead and read that scripture for us. And we'll get into today's passage. So finally, my brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord. It is no trouble for me to write the same things to you again. And it is a safeguard for you. Watch out for those dogs, those evildoers, those mutilators of the flesh. For it is we who are the circumcision, we who serve God by his spirit, who boast in Christ Jesus and who put no confidence in the flesh, though I myself have reasons for such confidence. If someone else thinks they have reasons to put confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, in regard to the law of Pharisee, As for zeal, persecuting the church. As for righteousness, based on the law, faultless. Whatever whatever were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. I want to know Christ, yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his sufferings and becoming like him in his death and so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained all this or I've already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. All right, may the Lord add his blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. And so today we're going to be focusing in on those last three verses, verses 12 through 14. Um, the last time we had talked on this passage, so two weeks ago, uh, we had looked at some of the things we looked at then. We looked at Paul's life before Christ and kind of his confidence in the flesh. You know, he had pursued salvation on his own terms, his own merit, and on what he could do. And you know, he pursued confidence in the flesh, you know, confidence in himself, confidence apart from Christ. And he did it, you know, really better than any others uh, with all the right credentials and the pedigree and human effort. And that's when he was talking about, you know, I I was a Hebrew of Hebrews. You know, he had all the right credentials. But his conclusion was it was all rubbish and lost. It was a waste and only worthy for the dung heap. You know, all of it amounted to nothing and gave him no standing before God. You know, even worse, he, he was saying it was a great liability to his own salvation and being made right with God. It was of no value. And then uh, the second thing we saw was that his, his encounter with Christ changed his life. It changed everything for him. You know, that humbled Paul to see his sin and to truly know God that, and to know that Jesus is his Lord. He grasped his own sinfulness and his need for a Savior. He grasped his need for Christ and his righteousness in order to be saved. And so he humbly responded you know, to God, placing his faith and trust in Christ, knowing, and knowing that Christ, knowing the surpassing greatness of Christ, uh, that transformed his life. And so he humbly responded to the Lord. You know, no longer was his life about him and his own confidence in what he could do and the pride of self, or, you know, but instead his life now is found in the joy of knowing Christ and, who, and knowing that Christ is surpassingly great. You know, so Paul died to himself in order to gain Christ and be found in him and to have Christ's righteousness. And so from that point on, Paul's confidence is in Christ alone. It's in Christ's righteousness. It's in Christ's salvation, his death on the cross, his resurrection, and in Christ's life. And so Paul just really came to that conclusion. There is no confidence outside of Christ and his gospel of grace, which has transformed you know, wretched and dead sinners into righteous and living saints. 
And then that led in the passage to verses 10 and 11 that just led to Paul's pursuit of becoming like Christ. You know, living out the salvation and righteousness that comes from being found in Christ. You know, living by faith in Christ who lives in me. You know, doing everything for the glory of God for him who loves me and gave himself for me. You know, so Paul's singular focus in his life is, is uh, living by, for, and through Christ. And in Philippians 3, 10, and 11, I'll just repeat those verses. Because it really sums Paul's pursuit of becoming like Christ. It sums that up. He says, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow to attain to the resurrection from the dead. You know, that's really Paul's heartbeat, living for Christ, pursuing Christ, becoming like him in every way, just out of worship for what Christ has done in his life. And so we're going to pick up... Uh, after verse 11, then we're going to pick up on verse 12 here and begin looking at this passage. So let us have a word of prayer as we begin. Dear Father, we thank you so much for uh, just your word again, for allowing us to know you. Lord, and just in this passage, we just see, hear Paul just proclaiming how uh, just his faith in you, and how you are surpassingly great. Lord, just may we discover that anew each and every day in our lives, that you, you are surpassingly great. And Lord, just may we, we have a, our only do- desire would be to know you and to know you more. Lord, just strengthen us as we go through this passage. May your spirit fill us and just may we have a deeper walk with you. In Christ's name, amen. All right, so in verse 12, the first thought we're going to be looking at in this verse is that Christ Jesus took hold of me. You know, that verse says, not that I've already obtained all this or I've already been made perfect, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. And so Paul's life, you know, it really is a, his life is a passionate longing after Christ. And that's what we see in this whole passage. You know, and this this whole letter has really shown that as well. If you remember back in chapter 1, verse 21, he says, For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. You know, he's passionately longing after Christ. And we've seen that in this section of scripture. You know, so for him, nothing else matters but knowing Christ. You know, pursuing him, you know, living up to uh, Christ's calling and righteousness, you know, living in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, you know, that has been Paul's aim, and that is the aim, really, that's the aim for every believer. You know, to know Christ is our eternal pursuit. You know, nothing else matters. Nothing has meaning outside of knowing Christ. And so really, life has value, life has meaning only in connection to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ. You know, seeking value, worth, meaning outside of Christ is ultimately futile and rubbish. Everything outside of Christ and knowing him will perish. I think Jesus' words uh, on what eternal life is uh, captures Paul's words here. Je- Jesus says this in John 17, 3. He says very clearly what eternal life is. He says, now this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. And so our eternal pursuit, you know, the essence of eternal life is to know God and Jesus Christ. Knowing Christ, you know, pursuing the surpassing greatness of Christ is what our lives are to be focused on, and that's what our eternity will be spent pursuing. You know, there is no other pursuit worthy of giving our lives to or giving our eternity to. Jesus also said uh, in, in, in John as well, apart from me, you can do nothing. You know, there is nothing we can do that will last, that will have any value apart from him. You know, but in him, we're reminded there is infinite value and worth. There is life. There is abundance. You know, pursuing Christ is a journey that carries on to perfection and into the very presence of our Savior, where we will know him face to face. And so just saying all that, that brings us back to verse 12, where Paul expresses his continual pursuit of Christ as he journeys through this life of faith. You know, Paul starts by saying, not that I have already obtained all this or I've already been made perfect. Um, and that's just a very humble recognition from Paul of just of where he's at. And he said, I've, I've not obtained perfection. You know, I'm still growing. I'm pursuing Christ, but I recognize I have far to go in this Christian life. I have far that it's still a ton I need to learn. It's still a ton I need to grow in, and my character needs to continue to grow in this life. And I think that, that brings to our mind also another verse in Philippians 1.6, where, where Paul says, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. You know, again, it's just that humble acknowledgement of dependency on God um, just for, for this pursuit of perfection and living up to Christ's calling. There's just a humble acknowledgement of that, you know, that God is going to bring that to completion. It's not Paul's confidence in the flesh that's going to do it. It's God that's going to bring that to completion. And so Paul continues to be humbly confident in his Savior. And so verse 12 is, is not a new confidence in the flesh, but instead it's a humble pursuit of knowing Christ, of glorying in Christ, of becoming all that Christ has made him to be 
as he looks forward to the completeness of that perfection at the day of Christ Jesus. You know, there will be a day when he will stand before the Savior and he'll have uh, a new body and he'll be perfect. Um, but that is not this day. You know, he's still growing. He's striving towards that. You know, and also with this verse, the idea is that he is embracing fully all that Christ Jesus has taken hold of in him. And so when Paul says, you know, I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me, you know, what is it that Christ has taken hold of for him? You know, there's, there's a lot of things you could answer to that. Uh, but for one, just salvation. Christ Jesus has taken hold of salvation for Paul. He's given him his righteousness. Uh, Jesus has justified Paul, you know, that Paul stands justified before God, just as if he never sinned. You know, grace has been poured out in Paul's life. Mercy, he has a new identity. Uh, he has heavenly citizenship. He has freedom. He has hope, peace, joy, eternal life. He has purpose, meaning, and goodness. Um, he has everlasting love, and on and on. Christ Jesus has taken hold of all these things for Paul. And Paul just has in mind all that Christ has done for him, and, and for all believers, really. He has in mind the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ and the infinite worth, value, and depth of knowing Christ. And so Paul is just expressing his joy that all these things are his in Christ, that Christ Jesus took hold of me, and these things are all mine because of Christ. And so in response, Paul is just continuing to live by faith in this life. He, he's going to press on, and he's going to strive with every nerve of his being you know, to take hold of these things that Christ has secured for him, that he may know Christ more and more, that he may know the depth of what Christ has secured for him, in order that his life may be a humble offering of worship to his Savior as he presses on to, to the day when he will be with Christ in perfection for all eternity. And so I think for, for all of us, this is a call for believers to live in the reality of our identity in Christ, you know, to live out what Christ has put in us already, what he's already secured for us. You know, Paul is speaking of his own pursuit while he's also teaching the Philippian church to press on, to press on. And we, in turn, we are hearing this message as well, to press on in our faith as we work out what God has already put into us, what he's already secured through his son, Jesus. You know, we aren't fully perfect yet. You know, far from it. I say that for myself, far from it. Um, but we live by faith in what has been eternally secured through Christ. And so we press on with all our heart to know Christ and live out his calling for our lives. You know, we relive in the reality of our identity in Christ, you know, in our eternal citizenship. And we, we no longer live in the dominion of sin and our past identity of sinfulness and death. And instead, we live in our identity in Christ. And that brings us uh, to, to the next verse. Uh, the next verse, uh, Paul goes on, and I just have this titled, Redeemed Remembering. You know, he goes on to say, Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. You know, Paul begins this verse by saying, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. You know, he's reemphasizing verse 12. You know, he says, I don't know the fullness of Christ yet as I should, uh, nor have I lived up to the fullness of his calling on my life. You know, this is a continual work in progress. You know, Paul is growing and striving with all his heart, and we are called to do so as well. Um, but Paul also, in this verse, he has the utmost confidence that he will take hold of knowing the fullness of Christ. And he puts a key word in that verse. He says, yet. You know, and that, that word yet, um, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. You know, yet communicates Paul's confident expectation that he will obtain perfection in Christ. You know, his hope of final perfection is secure in Christ. And nothing will hinder his pursuit of that perfection, nor will he remain, you know, sinfully content with where he's at. He's going to continue to pursue that perfection, knowing that it is there, and that is, there, is, is secure in Christ. And so he's going to strain forward uh, and strain toward what is ahead and the perfection that is his in Christ. And so likewise, I think the call for us is that we would strain toward what is ahead and the perfection that is ours in Christ, what has already been secured for us. And really, when you think about it, why, why would we pursue anything other than Christ and all that he has taken hold of for us? You know, all that he has created us to be in this life and, and the life to come. Why would we pursue anything else? You know, our one aim is to know Christ and to pursue his holiness, his righteousness, to pursue his perfection as we humbly and worshipfully live in the power of Christ's death and resurrection, which has saved us and transformed us. And so this brings us also to an important thought. Paul says, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. You know, I think how we look back in life is important. How we look back on things is important. Um, how many of you have regrets? Anyone? Anyone have regrets? Okay. Some of you aren't being truthful, and I'm just joking. Uh, <laughs> all of us, I think, probably, if we look back, have regrets. You know, there's things we like to change. 
uh, things we like a do-over on, um, or opportunities we would like to maybe have again. You know, how many of you have things you've learned now that you wish you knew earlier so that you can make, take, you would have made a different decision earlier? You know, there's so many things like that. We all have those things in our lives. And I think the past and how we remember it can be, at the same time, it can be a huge hindrance to the present and pressing forward in our walk with Christ. I think that's a little bit what Paul's getting at here. And so I think Paul, he's not going to let his past hinder his pursuit of Christ. You know, we, we can't change the past as much as we'd like to at times and dwell on it. We, we can't change the past. We can't repeat it. We can't do it over. We cannot dwell on what ifs. You know, the past is, is the past. It is what it is. You know, we can't change that. I think how we remember it is important. Uh, we must consider, I think, carefully how we remember the past. You know, if you are in, in Christ, the past does not define you. Your identity is eternally in Christ and what he has done and, what, and who he says you are. Um, that kind of gets back to that song we just sung. I think Paul in verses 4 through 7, you know, he, he, you know, he, Paul says, forgetting what is beyond, but in 4 through 7, he did go back and, and reflect on his past a little bit. You know, in 4 through 7, he recalled his past before Christ, and in verses 8 and 9, he was recalling even some of his life and shortcomings as a Christian, and his conclusion was, well, you know, all of it is a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. You know, all that was a loss, and it's all, all my life is about Christ. You know, I think in the context of this letter, the reason Paul is doing this as well is because Paul is, is warning the Philippian church against the Judaizers, those Jewish Christians who were proclaiming a false gospel of prideful confidence in the flesh. You know, they, they were saying that you could keep the law uh, on your own and that you could be saved by that. And that was a false gospel, and that was one that Paul personally in his past had pursued before coming to faith in Christ. And he had just proclaimed in verses 7 through 8 that all that was rubbish. And so now he, I think, is reemphasizing to the church to forget this way of religion, you know, to leave that in the past. You know, everyone's past, ultimately, you know, these Jewish Christians, they were still building up uh, confidence in the flesh, you know, confidence in completing the law on their own. And I think really for all of us, uh, our past is full of pride and really pursuit of our own salvation apart from Christ. You know, when we were walking in sin, that's what we were pursuing. We were pursuing our own way of doing things, our own salvation. And Paul's saying, don't go back to that. Don't, don't recall those things in such a way that it will influence your present spiritual outlook. Don't go back to those with that way of living. You're dead to that. You're alive in Christ. You know, your present is Christ and living by, for, and through him. And so what, what, what counts in our past? What are the things that we should look back on and reflect on our past? What counts? Well, what counts is only the things that Christ has done. You know, Paul is reminding us to leave behind all past confidence in the flesh. You know, forget those things. Leave behind your sin which Christ rescued you from. You know, forget all your pride and self and humbly remember Christ and what he has done in your life. I think if, you, if we were to put ourselves in Paul's shoes, I think Paul, I'm sure in some ways he would love to change his past, you know, to, to get rid of his murderous days as a Pharisee, you know, to redo his days of confidence in the flesh, but he can't. So how he, he remembers his past is, is important. Obviously, he cannot change any of that, but how you remember it is important. You know, if he were to dwell on his past, you know, the what ifs, the I wish I could have done this, that would only distract him from his present reality of being in Christ. Or if Paul in the present was wallowing in guilt over his past, you know, over how he murdered Christians, if he was just wallowing in guilt over that, that could place him either on a path of kind of self-righteously trying to make things right on his own, um, you know, kind of a new confidence in the flesh, or maybe he'd be so crippled by the guilt of that and that he'd be led to inaction, both of which would ultimately deny what Christ has done in his life, that Christ has forgiven him, and that Christ has allowed him to walk forward in his righteousness. You know, or if Paul, if he were to recall his past, and he were to glory it, and just to kind of say, well, you know, my past, it, it is what it is, and it made me who I am today, I wouldn't change a thing about it. Well, if he was kind of glorying in what he did in his past, um, to do that would be to glorify his past self, and to advance the argument that says, well, let us just kind of continue to sin so that grace may abound. You know, Christ will just make up for my sins anyways, you know, so what does it matter how I lived in the past? You know, and, um, and so what does it matter how I live in the present? And by no means would Paul look back and exalt his past and his past sins as making him who he is. You know, nor would he repeat those same sins if he had opportunity for a do-over, and nor would he repeat them in the present. So really, ultimately, what is Paul's repentance? You know, response is not to look back and dwell on all this past. It's his response is that, you know, all my past, it was rubbish. It was a waste. It was a loss because it was outside of Christ. You know, so what made me who I am today, it, what made me is, is Christ. Christ made me who I am in Christ alone. 
you know, my past was full of resistance, disobedience, you know, and resisting God. You know, and, and really, Paul, he knows he would still be there if it weren't for Christ. And so it's only by Christ's uh, work in his life and his past that, and the grace that Christ poured out in him that his present is a constant pursuit of Christ. You know, so only what Christ has done is worth carrying forward and recalling. And so, yeah, would Paul and me, and really myself too, I, I would confess, you know, would we love to do things differently in the past? You know, sure, we would, but that really is beside the point. You know, what is it that matters? What should we remember? We should remember the surpassing greatness of Christ and his transformation in our life, in our past, in our present, and of our future. You know, the focus of any rec- recollection, I think, in our lives is, to, is should be ultimately to magnify Christ. You know, to flee from our past sin and to recognize, um, uh, to flee from our past sin and strain towards his righteousness. You know, to renounce any pride and past confidence in flesh in order to place our confidence only in Christ and what he has done as we strain forward in him. You know, so we recall what Christ has done in our lives. You know, we, we share testimonies. We recall what he's done in our lives. And oftentimes, he's worked on our lives in spite of us. I, I know that's true in my life. He's worked on my life in spite of what I've been doing. And so we look at our past and we magnify what Christ has done in our past in order that we may more passionately follow him in the present as we strain forward with all our hearts toward what he has secured for us in the eternal life to come. You know, so what is the, fo- the focus of Paul's present? Well, his focus is Christ and what he has done. You know, he's, his focus is the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ. So he, recall, he recalls the past only to magnify the greatness of Jesus and the victory that he has accomplished in his life. You know, it's not about Paul. It's not about him remembering his past and what he would do over. Instead, it's, I'm looking back at my past and what Christ has done, and I'm going to magnify in that. You know, so in our lives, let us take forward what Christ has revealed to us in our past, what what he has taught us. Let us take forward those things. Let us glory in those things that Christ has taught us. Let us humble ourselves as we view our past in glory only in Christ. You know, let us stand in awe of his redemption of our past and live confidently in the present in the power of his redemption and the security of our eternal hope in Christ. So I think it's critically important how we remember that we would magnify Christ and what he has done in our lives as we live in the present and press forward. And that leads us to the last verse, just the last, the, the idea here is just press on in verse 14, press on. And Paul finishes by saying, you know, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. And it's just a great verse. Um, you know, and it's along with the end of verse 13, there's this idea of straining toward what is ahead, you know, pressing on toward the goal to win the prize. Uh, I think you really do get the picture of a runner uh, giving everything they can give in order to complete the race with the finish line in view and, and the prize of victory awaiting them and urging them on that they may finish their race with joy. Uh, definitely as a runner myself, I, I connect that imagery here as well. And, and Paul uses that, that kind of same running, uh, running a race type imagery other places in scripture as well. And the author of Hebrews uses that too. And I think it's just, you know, this that reminder that there is a prize that awaits, that there's a finish line that we're, we're straining towards. You know, we haven't yet taken hold of that prize, but by faith it is there and we are pressing on with all our hearts. You know, and we're pressing on with all uh, joy, even in the midst of the strain, even in the midst of the trials. You know, enduring to the end through all tribulation in order to claim the prize at the finish of the race. And that's, you know, we're pressing on in that way. And Paul's wording in this verse is very clear um, when he talks about this. You know, this, this uh, straining is not a, a personal merit. It's not something that he's achieving on his own or earning the prize on his own effort, or it's not a new confidence in the flesh. You know, and merit is excluded by the reminder that it is God's enabling call and persevering grace through Christ that are what is required before the race can be completed. And, and the first is, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. You know, again, Paul is running the race to its completion because God has called him. God has saved him in Christ. God has forgiven and forgotten Paul's past in Christ. You know, God will bring him to the finish line by his grace. And God has secured his eternal salvation, his heavenly reward in Christ Jesus. He's called him heavenward. And so again, this is God's work. He has called us into this race. He has saved us and delivered us that we may run this race with that prize awaiting us. And so Paul's response, as well as the response of believers, is, is one of worship. You know, it's one of awe and wonder at what God has done. Our response is really the natural overflow of a life that Christ has taken hold of. You know, we are pressing on as a natural response of worship to what God has done in our lives. You know, our response is, should be one of total surrender to Christ and straining with all our heart to know him more. You know, to praise him with all our lives, to live every present moment for his glory, 
to answer his call in our lives, to live in his righteousness, to conduct ourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. You know, and to strain forward toward the finish line with every fiber of our being as we fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. You know, and what is the prize? What is the prize that we're striving for? Well, it's Christ himself and the crown of life that we will receive from him. You know, we are straining forward, forward towards that day where we'll be in his presence and, and, and receive that prize, the, the, the pleasure of being in his presence for all eternity. And so let us fix our eyes on the prize, on Jesus himself, and keep our focus on his upward call. Again, we are citizens of heaven. You know, let us live in the reality of who we are in Christ and what he has secured for us. You know, let us glory in what he has done in our past and let us rejoice in the promise of an eternal future with him. A few points just of application this morning as we just finish up. Uh, just one, just live humbly in the reality of who you are in Christ. You know, again, we are, we are not there yet. You know, we have not attained perfection. We are striving, we are growing day by day, uh, becoming more and more like Christ each and every day. And yes, there will be times we have setbacks in that. Uh, but we always are continually putting our lives back in line more and more with Christ, straining to become uh, more and more like him and pursuing that perfection. You know, so live humbly in the reality of who you are in Christ and what he has secured for you. And then second thought here, just consider carefully how you uh, remember and recall the past. You know, again, the past does not define who you are in Christ. Um, it, turn from sin and turn to God, and I think even in our memory. I think something, that's something for us to think about our memory. Sometimes we can reflect on our past, reflect on sins, and sometimes uh, that can almost turn us away from God as we do that. Uh, so I think we need to sometimes even uh, recognize that as we remember things in the past, it distracts us in the present from what God is calling us to be. Um, so turn to God even in your memory. And as you reflect on things, magnify what Christ has done in your life. Magnify his victories in your life. Glory in what he has done. You know, what, what he's done and done away with in your life, what he's doing and what he's promised and prepared. You know, glory in those things. Again, Christ died for your sin. You know, remember them no longer and live in the present and really the eternal reality of his grace and press on um, in, in him. And then lastly, the last thought, just go all in. You know, strain toward what is ahead with every fiber of your being. Um, you know, I think that should challenge us, you know, that thought of straining toward, toward what is ahead with every fiber of our being. That should make us really think, okay, how am I doing that in my life? Am I, am I straining forward with every fiber of our being? Is there areas in my life that, aren't, that I'm not doing that? You know, and that should cause us to evaluate our lives in many ways. You know, is my life directed toward this aim of, of um, straining towards him in everything? You know, and are there areas in my life that aren't? You know, so let us consider that. Let us evaluate our lives and let us respond by straining forward. Uh, uh, straining toward what is ahead with every fiber of our being. And another thought with that, with going all in, is endure, and endure by God's grace. Um, you know, we are called to endure, to live in a manner worthy of the gospel. And so with that, am I enduring by God's grace and living a life worthy of the gospel of Christ that has saved me? Am I enduring and living for the gospel today? Am I taking a stand for Christ and enduring in that? And seeing everything through the lens of the gospel in my life, am I enduring with that focus? And that, that leads to the last point, just living with a singular focus. Um, that singular focus, again, is knowing the surpassing greatness of Christ our Lord. You know, is my life focused on Christ? You know, again, all else is rubbish and will not last. That's where Paul, you know, has really been pointing out this whole passage. You know, our focus is to be on Christ. You know, so let us, like Paul, uh, just kind of as this, he finishes these verses, let us kind of have the same uh, heartbeat as him where he says, you know, well, one thing I do Forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. May that be our heartbeat as well. Will you pray with me? Dear Father, as we, as we have looked at this passage uh, for a few weeks, really, uh, we, we've, we've come to the, just the end of this, this section of Scripture, and we, we thank you for this passage. We, we thank you for just Paul, how he expresses his faith in you, how he expresses his heartbeat for his life. Lord, he just looks on his past and he recognizes uh, what you've done with his past, that, that you delivered him from sin, that you rescued him uh, from his pride, from confidence in the flesh, that you rescued him, uh, that as he looks back on his past, he, he sees the transformation you brought in his life and he just glories in you. And Lord, just as we look at our past, as we look at things in our lives, you know, that we would say, oh, I wish we would have done this or that or whatever. Uh, let us look back and look on that, those things anew and look how you have guided us in our lives, how you've transformed us, how you've brought your grace in our lives. 
Uh, Lord, as we look at our lives, may we always magnify what you've done and magnify your presence in our lives. Lord, help us in our lives. Help us uh, just as we live in the present, Lord, that we would strain with every fiber of our being uh, toward knowing you, toward pursuing you, toward living out your gospel. Lord, just may you direct us and guide us in that. May we have a greater hunger and thirst for, for more of you and for living for you in our lives. And Lord, just as we long for and look forward to that day when we will be in your presence, when we receive the great, the great prize of being with you for eternity and receiving the crown of life, Lord, we, we long for that and we desire that. We, we can't wait for that. Uh, but Lord, help us to keep our eyes on you as we uh, press forward in this life. Lord, just may we be your witnesses. May we be your ambassadors here. May we show the surpassing greatness of Christ uh, to others around us as we live our lives. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Alrighty, as we finish this morning, we'll be singing the hymn, Just Have Thine Own Way, Lord. We'll be singing verses 1, 2, and 4. Please stand as you're able. Uh, Fill with thy spirit till all shall see Christ only always living in me. I think that's really what Paul was getting at in this passage, you know, that we would live our lives to the glory of God, that our lives would magnify Christ, you know, that Christ only always living in me. So even as we reflect on our past, we recognize that he is the potter and we are the clay, that he has molded and shaped us, and he's continuing to finish that work in our lives. So praise God for that. Uh, so as we go, may, uh, all, may, may all see Christ only always living in, in each one of us. All right, as we uh, close the day again, uh, just as we finish, uh, please depart kind of from the back and kind of make your way forward. And it's been a pleasure to be with you this morning. And let us close in prayer. We can lift our hands up in prayer as we finish. Father, we thank you so much for your grace, your mercy. Thank you for allowing us to gather this morning. Lord, just as we go from here, may our heart be, be a, just a constant pursuit of you, just that we would pursue you in the surpassing greatness of knowing you. And Lord, as we go out into the world, may the world see Christ only always living in me. In Christ's name, amen. God bless you. We love you. Have a great week. Yeah.